In our introduction to using the shape sheet to smarten up shapes and control shape geometry, we briefly saw how to create a shape like this, but it still has a few problems. Notably, when you resize the shape, the point of the arrow stretches proportionally, which makes several of these on a page not look so good. You can see they're very inconsistent in the, in the way they look. What we really want is the shape to behave like this. You can see that when I make this smaller or longer, the aspect ratio of just the point or the arrowhead stays the same. You get a bunch of these on the page and it looks visually consistent and it's a lot easier on the user's eye. So let's see how we go about doing something like this. I'll right click on the shape and open the shape sheet for this arrow and scroll back into view. And we can go into the geometry one section right here and you can see that we can highlight points as we go around the shape. And you'll see that geometry one x two references geometry one x uh, geometry one x four references geometry one x two so that any changes to one point affect the other. And what we really want this point to, to do is stay a fixed distance from the right end of the shape. So, for instance, if I type in just width, that's all the way over to the right, whereas I can actually enter an expression and subtract off a little bit. Let's say, now look up here on the ruler, let's subtract off 0 0.25 inches. Now that's starting to look very much like the shape on the right. And in fact, you can see that as I resize this shape, the aspect ratio of the arrowhead stays the same. And what happened here is, instead of using proportional offsets like uh, proportional formulas, as you can see here, height times 0, height times 0.5, height times 1, we've entered an expression that says, go to the width and subtract off a constant value. So this is pretty good, and that's all That's all you have to do. That's one of the keys to using the shape sheet is breaking out of default formulas and entering expressions that make sense and help you get your job done. The only problem left with this is if I make the, the arrowhead thicker or thinner, the aspect ratio of the arrowhead still doesn't stay consistent. Here it's getting a bit fatter and duller and here it's getting sharper and if you look at this shape over here it actually maintains the same arrowhead shape no matter how thick the arrow is and the way we do that is to actually base the length of the arrowhead on the height of the shape and you can see that the shape is roughly one half inch tall and the distance of this arrowhead is actually half of that so what if we were to go in here and change this constant of a quarter inch to one half the height, height times 0 0.5. Well, let's do just height just to see what happens first. So now you can see that the, the offset of the arrow is exactly the same as the height. And what happens when we change the height of the arrow? Well, that changes too. And now you can see this, the aspect of our arrow, the pointiness of it, is staying the same. Let's go in and change that to height times 0.5 just to make it a little duller. There you go. And you can see that as I make copies of the shape, no matter how thick or thin the arrow is, the aspect of the arrow is always the same of the arrow head. No matter how long I make it or how short I make it, the, this point always has the same pointiness, the same aspect ratio. And again, this is really nice in a drawing that has many of these shapes because it's visually consistent and it's easy on the eye. So again, the key here is just to decide what the offset is and then do something based on the height or the thickness of the arrow, which we did right here. Just with one formula and one reference, we modified the location of two points to create a fairly smart arrowhead.